Welcome to the Style Therapy Makeover Experience. In this series, I found 10 deserving women, gave them a copy of my book, Style Therapy, and let them go to town documenting their style transformations. This series will show you what's possible when you have the right tools, the right attitude, and the willingness to do the work to transform your life from the inside out. In today's episode, we're following me through my style therapy experience. Now, this episode is of course going to be a little bit different than the past episodes. I am woman number 10. If you're wondering what happened to the actual style therapy contestant number 10, check out episode nine. Some of the women were not ready to complete their style journeys. So I thought it would be fun for me to hop in here for episode 10. A little uh, word of warning, not only did I create the work inside style therapy, I have done this work countless, countless times. So I started my career as a celebrity stylist, quickly moved into personal styling, styling executive women in Hollywood, everyday women, moms, helping them get their everyday style to reflect who they are as people. Now, after years and years of working as a stylist, your girl got too busy. So I stopped taking in-person clients and I transitioned into working with women online. My first venture was launching a program called Personal Style University. And that's kind of where the framework of a lot of the exercises in style therapy originated. Then over the years, working online with women, I hosted many a free style challenge. You'll see some of the exercises from the free challenges in here. Um, you know, I put a little new twist on them, of course, for style therapy. Whenever I launch anything, it's always first tested on me. That's literally how I started my career, working with women outside of one-on-one, -on -one, is I made myself my own client. I was in a place of stuckness in my style, so I created the work, used myself as a test subject. It really, really worked, and then I started using it on my clients and the rest is history. So as you watch this episode, just know I've been through this work a bajillion times. So I'm not coming from the same place as some of the other women in the series who have never looked at themselves and their style in this way. I be looking at myself like this all the time. So my breakthroughs are gonna be different than maybe what you've already seen. Maybe you think my breakthroughs are weak, but I continuously do this work because I'm always looking for a new breakthrough. Whether it's something around my money mindset, my body image issues, I'm always pushing my transformation forward, even if it's just by a little bit. Let's take a look at how I did over the four weeks. I hope you enjoy this episode. And remember, if you're ready for your style transformation, pick up a copy of Style Therapy, available wherever books are sold. All right, let's get into it. So week one is all about just starting where you are. And that involves the seven day selfie challenge. And it involves a lot of deep journaling, some soul searching, some, some question answering. And the very first thing that we do is we set our intention. So the intention that I set, see, look, Lauren does the work, is I wanna feel good. Like my short-term goal was to feel good in my clothes again, to feel good in my body again. I don't think quarantine was kind to many of us. I definitely slipped up on my fitness routine. So I said enough is enough for that on the short term. Um, I really just want to get that area of my life back in track because it makes me feel better when I physically feel better. 
Um, my long-term goal is to set up my style in a way where I'm really stepping into this next chapter of my life. I feel like I am absolutely entering a new chapter, a more next level chapter, if you will. And I wanna fully embody that woman. I wanna feel good in my body too. Dang you, quarantine. Actually, I can't even, I can't even blame quarantine because I could have still been working out on my own or doing Zoom training with my personal trainer. Like I could have, but I didn't, all right? And now here we are. So day one of my selfie challenge was the worst. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was the worst. I really needed to get my hair done that day. So I was hiding behind a hat. I grabbed this Proenza tie-dye shirt. And every time I wear this shirt, I don't feel good. It felt a little sloppy. It felt very hodgepodge. I didn't have a good day that day. So when I woke up this morning, Kenzo's ass kept me up all night. The best I could do was this shirt and jeans and a sneaker and I put on these necklaces. I mean, I don't look horrible, um, but this is honestly the best I could do. Now I could fake the funk and be like, oh my gosh, it's day one. I have to impress like all the people that I'm guiding through the book. Let me put on a dress and a little blazer. Now, nah, bitch, this is where I am right now. That's the God honest truth. This is where I'm at. This is the truth. And if I'm not truthful, I'm not gonna get the growth. Day two, I did a little bit better. So day three, we went deep and dark. As you've seen with the other episodes, this is one of the more major activities that we do in the book. And you're visualizing what's gonna happen if you don't improve this area of your life. And I know it seems like style, that's not that big of a deal. Oh, but it is, oh, but it is. What will happen if you don't improve your style? Okay, see, Lauren did the work, Lauren did the work. Um, for me, I'll gain more weight and I'm not okay with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with putting on a little extra pounds, especially during quarantine, or if that's just your body feels good with a little extra weight. Mine does not. So normally, you know, I'd be at the pool every day with my laptop now, you know, cause I'm living the pimp life. Um, I would be like strutting in my bikini, right? <laughs> I used to work out with a trainer three to five times a week. <laughs> Body was on point, muscles popping. Now I've got like the female version of a dad bod, I feel. <laughs> so I'm not strutting, I'm hiding. I got my little t-shirt on and I take it off and I lay out and then I put it back on to get on the elevator. I'm hiding. Because I didn't take as good of care of myself as I normally do during COVID and my body doesn't feel as fit as it usually is, who wants to torture themselves in clothes that remind them of that? Now I've still wore jeans all pandemic, but I've also wore more leggings than I usually do albeit fabulous leggings, okay, by Commando, love them. Sweatpants, although cute sweatpants, 90% is a favorite brand of mine. It allows me to forget <laughs> that I probably should go to the gym. So if I keep ignoring my style and gravitating towards these comfy, cozy things, I'll, you know, become more out of shape and that's not cool with me. I can't afford to hide if my big goal and intention for style therapy is to enter the next chapter of my life, enter the next level. TV show, more books, appearances, like me being out there is the big picture. So if I'm not taking care of myself, my style, my body, my health, I'm not going to feel comfortable and confident to go out there and fulfill my dream and my purpose for my future. So doing that deep and dark work definitely snapped me into a place where 
I put some nicer clothes on for day three. Um, I've got my Fendi top on, these um, commando faux leather, like paper bag waist pants, a cool turban. I went and got my eyebrows done that day and I felt so good. I got so many compliments and people started conversations with me all throughout the day. I felt happy, I felt body confident. It was a really good day and it kind of snowballed into the rest of the week. Uh, the next day I wore a super cute outfit, lots of compliments, lots of confidence. The day after that, I went out and I had a lunch meeting and again, feeling fly, feeling stylish. It was a very good week after getting through those first couple of days, which were tough. What message do you think your overall appearance was sending for the week? And that again is where I had another aha that I don't think my looks were conveying a cohesive message, which is not good. It's not good. So I need to reevaluate the message that I'd like to send, which that's what this book is all about. Like, you know, controlling the narrative, choosing your messaging, dressing accordingly. So I'm like, okay, this is perfect because seeing it all, like you guys, you see it all week after week, you see the selfies next to each other. And it's like, what is the message here? The days where I was dressing well and felt confident, I didn't eat a bunch of sugar. I actually worked out and went to the gym those, those days. So to me, it's all, it all connects. It all connects career, body, clothing, mindset. So overall week one was awesome. Like I'm glad that I did it. Going through week one, I was like, okay, I needed this more than I thought I did. And I'm really glad that I did it. So that was week one. I'll see you in week two. Week two update. Week two devoted to clearing the path, y'all. I, doesn't matter how many times I've done this work, there's always a style roadblock lurking around the corner, ready to take me down. So on my other people's opinions, a weird one came up for me. I mean, I guess it's not that weird, but as you guys have probably noticed, I am not the sexiest dresser in town. I really gravitate more towards tomboy styles. I don't show my boobs. I don't really show off my butt. You're not gonna find any like ho pictures on my Instagram feed. But as I was working through the roadblocks, I realized that I have this fear of people thinking that I'm dressing too sexy. So yeah, with my past, I definitely used my sex powers for evil rather than good. So now I have this fear that dressing in any kind of sexy way is going to bring forth negative attention and negative consequences. So as I evaluated that roadblock, I just really need to recognize that those are old. Those are such old memories, old consequences. I mean, they're over 12 years old. What's an action that you can take to counteract that roadblock? And for me, it's about creating a new definition of sexy. Maybe sexy doesn't mean showing off my cleavage or wearing things that are super tight. I get to reinvent that. Body confidence. Every gal's got some body confidence issues. I've yet to meet one that doesn't have them. When I was young, I was sitting on a porch, <laughs> my, my porch, my parents' porch, sitting on the swing, you know, it was a hot Virginia day. I think it was even 
maybe raining outside. It was like muggy. And I had on shorts and my grandmother said something about my legs being big. And I just, woo, my little brain just went to town on that one. Going through style therapy this time, all sorts of things came up for me. One being that growing up, my dad was overweight and it was always a topic in our household about, you know, my dad eating healthier, my dad working out, my mom would like be on him about his health and his body. So in my developing mind, I believe that I connected being bigger with being bad. Kenzo, cats. I have a prompt here in style therapy that says redefine your definition of beauty. And my definition of beauty is giving back to others. And that is not dependent on anybody's size. Um, I think that I, I know that my standard of beauty has been warped, especially working in the fashion industry and being around entertainment and Hollywood. Like, what is that? The physical, you know, norm of beauty? Like, what is that? I know firsthand working with celebrities that shit ain't that beautiful, okay? And a lot of it's fake and manipulated. I'm gonna wear clothes that celebrate my shape. Not necessarily show it off, but celebrate it. I'm gonna love my body by treating it well. And I'm always gonna replace a negative comment with a positive one. So, you know, because in my young mind, bigger is bad and with COVID and, you know, Everyone's got a little extra COVID fluff on them. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of people. Anything I say bad, like, ooh, my stomach, you know, doesn't have abs anymore. Dude, my body has kept me healthy all pandemic long. I can walk. I can move. I can exercise. Like, there's people that can't do that. So why am I beating myself up over some ridiculous standard of beauty when really my body can do so many magical things. So I want to keep in that space to combat this roadblock. What else do we got? Oh, the money one. Oh, the money one. <laughs> one of the things that came up during the money block is there is this pair of Gucci loafers that I really wanted. They'd been in my wish list on Net-A-Porter for months and they sold out and I really wanted them, but I didn't really even bother to really search for them all that much because they were kind of expensive. They were expensive. Um, so I found myself at Nordstrom Rack and I found two pair of Gucci shoes, not those loafers, but they were on sale. So I snapped them up. And when I got home, I'm like, I'm doing it again. I was trained at a young age to shop discount, which there's nothing wrong with shopping discount. But what I talk about in the book is the fact that I mimic that behavior in other areas of my life. So when I'm shopping for things, just straight dash to the clearance aisle, straight dash to the sale rack, I'm only choosing out of what's left. I've eliminated all other choice for myself because I've only, you know, said that I'm worthy of this. Even if there was something great full price that maybe was even cheaper than the sale price, I'd only go to the sale. So I had that realization when I bought these other pair of shoes that were cute, but they weren't what I wanted. So I went home and I went on Saks.com and I found my shoes, the Gucci's that I wanted, one pair left in my size. They were cheaper than getting the two pair of shoes that I just kind of liked. So I made like a little oath to myself that I'm only buying what I truly want and truly like. So one of the exercises in style therapy is to write your style eulogy. It's getting rid of one piece in your closet that carries emotional baggage and you write a 
a goodbye letter to it, y'all. This is so embarrassing. So the thing that I got rid of, oh my God, this fake engagement ring that I had. So I was shopping with a friend at Nordstrom Rack. This was like years ago. And I was shopping for just like little costume rings, like, you know, like this little star costume ring. And there was like a fake engagement ring. And I was telling her that my friend who's at, who is actually, you know, engaged, she's married now, when she would go somewhere like on a trip, she would have a fake version of her ring. So her real one didn't get damaged or stolen. So I was telling her that story and she was like, let's just try these like fake rings on. And I said, I'm gonna buy one. Is this gonna be like my manifestation ring? Like I'm gonna put it on and like feel the energy and I'm gonna use it for manifestation. So one day I can be engaged. She goes, I'm gonna do it too. So we bought our little fake manifestation engagement rings. And after a while, it became this like constant reminder that I wasn't engaged. Like it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do of like, ooh, law of attraction. It was like, mm, bitch, you still ain't engaged. I found myself kind of obsessing over it, like obsessing over being, you know, at the time almost 40, now I am 40 and not being engaged and like looking at this little fake ass ring and journaling and praying like, where is he? What's going on? And it's not good. It's not good. So the second that I let that go, not the physical ring, but like let go of the notion of like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm 40. When he comes, he comes, whatever. Then men started like just appearing out of the sky, just like, boop, there's a man, boop, there's a man. So I wrote this whole letter. Honestly, a little manifestation ring, like yeah, you ain't even good enough. Like you're not even, that rock ain't even big enough for what's coming my way. So I wrote the whole letter and I ceremoniously threw the fake engagement ring over the balcony, <laughs> said a little, said a little prayer, made sure the ring wouldn't hit anyone on the way down. But oh, the weight of letting that go, oh, it felt so good. Uh, the final thing that I'll share for my week two recap is choosing your words, choosing your words that you want to represent your signature style. So just some of the words that came up for me were trailblazer, iconic, being memorable, um, when I'm hanging out, being cool, intriguing, approachable, social, like sexy, fun, and magnetic. So I can use those words when I'm shopping, when I'm putting together looks to see if that's what's coming up. And I picked those words because in this next level of my life, I need to be out there. <laughs> I need to be remembered. I need to be iconic. So that's week two. See you in week three. It's week three, Style Awakening Week. But before I give you a little recap on my week, check it out. Yoji sweatshirt and Yoji dog. <laughs> so one of the most important components of week three is the goal setting and the style. This week is all about visualizing. If we're gonna dress as the women that we want to become, we need to know who that woman is. I love goal setting. I'm addicted to goal setting. I'm addicted to manifestation. Like I have completely built my life from my imagination, from the home that I purchase, the cars that I drive, the business that I have, the money that I make. It's all by design, my friends, and you can design it as well. So I wrote down my professional and my personal goals. Um, professional is to expand the LM brand, um, TV show, more books, products, 
etc. Personal goals, I want to move into a house by the beach, specifically Manhattan Beach, uh, deepen my spiritual practice, get married, big goals, big goals for LM. And then, you know, you map out where you want to see yourself in one year, five years, 10 years from, from now. And the big kicker for me in week three was the question, what message do you want to send with your wardrobe? So you answer that question with your goals in mind. So if I'm expanding my brand, I want to live in this house, I want to have this big life, I'm really blazing a new path, I feel. Like for what I do with personal style, it's a new path. We're mixing personal development, we're goal setting, we're digging deep into our pasts and our childhoods. This is a new path, all right? Fashion industry ain't used to this stuff. So because my path and my career is so unique, I want my wardrobe to represent that. I want my wardrobe to send the message of, this girl is a trailblazer. Like what is going on here? So that was like really big for me because I'm always up leveling my style to match my life, but I feel like I'm on the cusp of a really big up level, like a huge up level. So tying in the messaging with where I'm going was huge for me. Ooh, the virtual shopping spree. So this is my virtual shopping spree. So I decided to shop the Webster. My virtual shopping spree didn't have as many pieces as it normally does when I do this work, but I happen to love everything that I put on my shopping spree. The one thing that kind of stood out that I would never ordinarily put in my cart is fine jewelry. I wear costume jewelry exclusively. I have no fine jewelry, but that's something that upgraded Lauren would like to have in her wardrobe. Also choosing my style type. I love the street style chic style. I love the tomboy look. I love a little bit of edgy classic, a little bit of polished professional. And I struggled figuring out a name for my new style type, but then it came to me. The Confidence Crusader, right? I'm like crusading for women to have confidence. That's the name. There's so much in week three. There's so much in it. So wrote the goals down, right? Figured out the style type, right? So then create a visual. I love vision boards. I love mood boards. This is my vision board for my style. And this is a vision board for my life. I have vision boards all over the freaking place. I have one that's on a physical board in my bathroom. So every time I get dressed in the morning and put on my makeup, I look at it. So I took a photo of that board and I printed it out on sticker paper and stuck it in this book. I put a lot of words on my board. I put like God leading the way. I put time spent creating because I love to create. I love to create videos, love to create content and books. I put groundbreaking. I found in a magazine something that says confidence crusader. So that's on there and like money. I've got my um, Trevor Noah picture up here. Trevor, call me, give me a call. Let's talk about shopping. I don't need anything. I need nothing. <laughs> there were a few holes on my ultimate wardrobe checklist that I would like to fill, but I actually don't need to fill them right now. So my biggest holes are like cashmere sweaters, turtleneck, bomber jacket, a tweed jacket. It's about to be summer. So I put those, you prioritize your list. You circle like low, medium, or high. So most of my stuff is pretty low. <laughs> like 
I really, I have so much stuff. It's fine. Like, I don't really need anything. Now there's a second list on here of building your signature style list. So these are those wow pieces that really set you apart. So things that I put were like real jewelry, mama wants diamonds, sick of this costume stuff. Actually, I'm not sick of costume. I just want to incorporate some realness. My Birkin bag made the list and I need more dresses. I need dresses for day and night. I need shoes that are not heels because I'm done with heels. I'm done. A year and change of not wearing heels because of the pandemic coupled with being in my 40s, we're done. And I need sunglasses. That was something on one of the conversations we had in Style Confidence Collective when I said one of my three words is intriguing. Someone suggested that I incorporate more sunglasses. I'm like, you are absolutely correct. I need more sunglasses. So I'm adding that and colorful handbags. A lot of my bags are black and I want to pop, I want some fun. But again, none of these are high on the priority list. I really don't need to shop, but you know I'm gonna do it anyways. Check this out. I match. So this week is devoted to putting all of the pieces together. So in week four, I got to do the shopping. I got to do the styling. I got to do the accessorizing. I got to put the, the lookbooks together, which makes getting dressed so much easier. I think my biggest takeaways from week four were one, I spend a lot of money on clothes and two, Outfit planning rocks the house. When I outfit plan, it makes getting dressed go faster. It gives me more options. It allows me to be more creative with my clothing. It allows me to express my messaging because it's already pre-meditated. It's already pre-thought of. I don't have to just run in my closet and be like, oh, I guess I'll wear this today. So it reminded me that that pattern of doing this work ahead of time, you know, planning your looks, putting them in the lookbook template, it really helps. All right, I'm in my room to do a little outfit formula creation. So basically I'm gonna head into my closet. I'm just gonna pull stuff out and make as many different outfit combinations as possible. And then I'm gonna jot them all down. Here we go. The other moment, the log your haul. So there is a section in the book, week four, day 23, where you write down all of your purchases from your shopping trip. So you can keep track of what you spent and you can note if you want to keep, return, exchange, or alter something. This is the moment that I had in week four where I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't like, I could do it for clients, but I don't like seeing the cost of everything I purchase all laid out in front of me. I don't like that. <laughs> I spent a lot of money on clothes. None of the things feel expensive in the moment when I'm purchasing them. I'm like, oh, those shoes are 569 bucks. No big deal. But then when I see that I bought like multiple pairs of shoes during the shopping week, ranging from 500 something dollars all the way to $980, that kind of stings. So little Lauren tip, when you're shopping like a stylist, and that's what I'm teaching you inside of style therapy, you kind of need to make the decision if you are going to just invest like when i worked with clients in person this was the shopping that they did for the whole entire year or at least six months so they would drop down 
5,000, 10,000, $15,000 on clothes. So for me to do that, it's fine if I don't do a lot of little BS shopping randomly on the weekends, which I do. Thankfully, I'm a successful woman and I know how to run a successful business to make money, but it did, it did give me pause. It did give me pause that I'm like, hmm, I'm spending a lot of money on clothes. Uh, I do consign my clothes, so I get some of it back, but seeing it all on paper like that, eek. So that was tough. Um, anyways, let's go look at some of the fabulous things that I purchased, shall we? Okay, so one is these Dior clogs. I had my eye on these for so long. They're in a local boutique and then I was like, I at least gotta try them on. They fit perfect and they're comfortable. And I did want some flat shoe options because I'm just done with heels. So those were actually perfect. Um, these are the Gucci loafers that I got. And I mean, they fabulous, am I right? And they're comfortable and they really just elevate my looks and give them more of that signature style thing that I'm looking for. So I got this uh, on Shopbop and then I also got the oops, matching shorts. I have wore the shorts. This is the back of the shorts. I've wore the shorts twice and honestly, I probably could return this because I already found three different ways to wear the sequin shorts. Like I had a vision of them being worn together, but I actually don't like them together. I like the other things I put together with the sequin short, but I'm gonna try this on in a couple different combinations to see if it's worth keeping. That's another tip. When you try something on and you like it, and you're not sure, don't necessarily trust that feeling. Try putting it with some different things. I was drawn to this knit dress and I tried it on, who is this? Ultra Zara, Ultra Zara. And I tried it on and the guy at the store was like, that looks amazing on you. And he wasn't just saying it to sell it. I know the boutique owners and I tried on a bunch of other stuff, but he was like, this? Oh yeah. But I felt uncomfortable because it was showing my shape. And I don't know, I felt the roadblock. I felt like what it was, right? It wasn't just, oh, I feel uncomfortable. I'm just not gonna do it. It was, I feel uncomfortable and I know why. It's the darn style roadblock of me being able, me being afraid to show off my shape because I'm worried that people will think, I think I'm too sexy. And I knew it was a roadblock and I knew that I had to push through it. So I tried the dress back on for a second time. And I was like, you know what? I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And I'm glad that I did because um, it looks really good. I also got this Acne Studios lace bodysuit. And again, I kept this with the tags because I just wasn't sure. Um, 72 hour rule, which I talk about in the book, is take at least 72 hours before you pop any tags on a new garment. This was like, Oh my God, I kept the tags on forever. So I just wasn't sure. It's hard to see, but it kind of looks like a tattoo once you have it on. But again, this was bringing up that roadblock about being too sexy, but I styled it in a really cool way. Um, I've had baggier jeans, the, the Gucci loafer, um, an oversized blazer, and it was just the right amount of sexy. And that's when I had that moment of like, oh, I figured it out. I figured out 
how to infuse sexy so I feel sexy without looking like the standard, this is how sexy is supposed to look. Like I fully embraced my own sexy. So I'm so glad that I kept this because this garment actually helped me push past a roadblock because I tried this outfit on with like these pat these liquid leggings and like a little leather bra underneath and it looked cute but I felt so uncomfortable I'm like this is sexy but I feel uncomfortable so I made my own sexy with it and I was magnetic that night everybody was talking to me overall I'm, I'm really happy with what I got even though it stung you know to look at all the pricing together I'm like Neh. I'm really happy with my purchases and I'm really happy and have no regrets on what I returned. So I don't know, now that I'm in here in the closet, I think I'm gonna play with some clothes again. Let's do it. Okay, post challenge reflections. Let's do this part together, shall we? Okay, on a scale from one to 10, how satisfied are you with your personal style now? So here's what I've realized over this 30 day experience is I have everything I need. I've got the clothes, I've got the skills. I have everything that I need to be a 10 all the time. If I put in the effort from my outfit to my hair, to my makeup, to what I do in the morning with my morning routine and my attitude, I will feel like a 10. Now, if I half-ass it, not quite. <laughs> Six, seven, eight if I'm lucky. But when I do put forth the maximum effort that I know I'm capable of, I am a 10. At the end of this 30 days, I wanted to feel good in my body again. I wanted to get my like beauty life back on track. I was not feeling pretty when I started this um, experience. My long-term goal, which will be past the 30 days, is to get into icon status with my style and really stepping into my greatness at all times. So this like good enough outfit? No, long-term, I don't want good enough. I want great. So I was going to meet up with some friends at the pool for just a little pool hang, you know, a little Monday pool hang and I was posting something on social media that was this post-it in the mirror that says, does your outfit support the woman that you're becoming? The outfit I had on was a bathing suit to get ready to go to the pool, but I ended up posting the selfie with my cover up on and my shorts. But when I looked back at the photo of me in the bikini, I was like, is that really me? <laughs> Cause I look pretty freaking good. I look fucking amazing. <laughs> what the fuck? So that kind of snapped me out of it to be like, yo, so much of our body image issues, not all of them, but a good chunk of them are simply our own perception of ourselves. A lot of us have, you know, I'll speak for myself. I have at times poor body image issues where I'll see myself as one thing and then I'll see the picture and I'm like, wait, what was I tripping about? So that moment for me was very like, why are you wasting time worried about obsessing about your body? If you want it to be better, do something about it. At the end of the day, I still wanna eat cookies and bullshit. So as I am right now, pretty good with it. And when I dress with intention, to my style type, to my goals, I feel good and I don't trip over my body. So what's changed is like those little aha moments of like, oh my gosh, I've been wasting months of my life tripping over my body. Lauren, stop doing that. Like, Lauren, you know that you don't feel as great when you're not dressed as great. Stop doing that. But when you document it in the book and you go through the process, and you write it down, you can say, whoa, I dramatically had a better day on day three when I got dressed versus day one where I knew I wasn't on point. So it's those moments when you solidify them and you can really go back and tangibly look, 
that changes you. It really does, because you don't forget that moment. There's like a timestamp and an emotional imprint in that moment where you're like, I'm not doing that no more, right? Has getting dressed become easier? Ye yes, because I know what's at stake. Is it easier to wake up in the morning and grab a ratty t-shirt and jeans? Yes, <laughs> that is easy AF. <laughs> so yes, it takes more effort to put on a better outfit, but when you have the formulas, when you have the skills, when you have the confidence, the extra effort is not strenuous anymore. How confident am I that I can reach my personal and professional goals? Very confident. And you know what? Through this process, I did get a nice little confidence boost in terms of where I would like to go in my career. Why wouldn't I get there? Like, why wouldn't I get to the next level? It's so obvious that I would get there, but you can't think about that when your mind is worried about thinking about your body or thinking about money or thinking about what that person thinks of you. The moment you can clear those up, which is what this experience does inside of style therapy, you're like, wait, I just literally saw myself in a bikini in a photo and I look great. Why am I wasting my mental, my precious mental space thinking about my body when I could think about reaching my full potential and my goals? The roadblocks, they never die. It's like in a horror movie. You kill the roadblock, you're like, whew, glad he's dead. And then all of a sudden, his ass pops back up. Pain is growth. It doesn't always have to be, but it's a damn good catalyst for growth. And it's your choice what you do with that. If you want to continue to grow, then you have to continue doing the work and you have to continue having breakthroughs, no matter how stylish, successful, happy, whatever you are, there's always another level to get to. And some people are happy at their level, but if you're anything like me, who's like, I'm addicted to achievement and growth. And every time I reach my potential, I'm like, oh, that wasn't even scratching the surface. Then you just keep doing more. You just keep doing more. So I'm super proud of myself. I'm super proud of all of you for doing this work, the 10 women especially. Honestly, like, can you guys imagine what the world will be like if women have that unstoppable confidence that comes from having the insides and the outsides being badass to another level. Like, can you imagine what we could do? So I thank you for picking up this book. If you haven't yet, Style Therapy, 30 Days to Your Signature Style, available anywhere books are sold. Grab the book, do the work, and if you wanna continue doing the work, please join me the other 10 women and hundreds of other women inside of Style Confidence Collective. It is my monthly membership where we work on up-leveling our style and our lives. Personal development, money manifestation, we talk business, we talk style, we talk books. It's the most uplifting, badass community of women on the internet, I'm convinced. So join us there to continue the journey. Grab the book. And let's do this, let's do this. So thank you for following me along my journey. I'm gonna to continue to level up my style and my life, and I hope you do the same. Peace out.